Disclaimer. Basic soldering skills are needed to replace a Game Boy Color speaker. Be very careful soldering as you can burn yourself on the molten metal, soldering iron, or both. Maybe even start a house fire. Also, I am not responsible if you damage your Game Boy Color in the process. Wait, do I really need to say any of this? All of it should be obvious. You ever boot up your Game Boy Color and it sounds a little bit off? Like pretty quiet, but maybe there's more to it. It's at max, by the way. <laughs> That's a pretty good sign you need to replace your speaker. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to do that, and then we can get back to our Pokemon Yellow here. Going to need a soldering iron, which I got heating up here. A Phillips head screwdriver, little tri-wing screwdriver, and your speakers. But depending on what you got, you may, may also need solder to tin stuff and soldering paste, also known as flux. But I'm not going to need these for this one. There are screws of the tri-wing variety here, underneath the battery cover and batteries, and here. One there, one there, one there, and one there. Take them all out, and you will have this. And this is where things are a little bit dicier. See, there's this ribbon cable up here. You absolutely, positively, actually I should get this to focus. Absolutely, positively, probably should take out this ribbon cable. You can do this, you see little black flaps on the side, these little clips. And you got, see how I lifted it up there? I'm gonna do it on the other side. It's, my hands are big compared to this thing, so. And lift it up like so. And now, I'm actually gonna leave that just, just for a second here. And I'm gonna come down to these three screws here. One in the middle, one beside the battery spot there and then one over here so three more screws to take out here I leave these in while I do the the ribbon cable because it keeps it all secure and then I don't have to worry about it tearing the ribbon cable while I'm shuffling stuff around and whatnot because ribbon cables are very very delicate so be careful you break it your screen goes bye bye and you have to get another one the screws are out now I'm gonna turn this sideways here I'm going to lift up, grabbing the cartridge slot, and then carefully, very carefully wiggle out the ribbon cable with one hand. Actually, I probably should do this with two hands here, just to be extra, extra safe on this. Just be nice and careful. And it's like a game cartridge in a way, only a million times more delicate. So once you get that out, you have your circuit board here. And this is our speaker. This area right here, is, see it's soldered onto that spot and that spot. That's why I don't think you need any extra solder because there's already solder on the wire. So you can just use that to attach. Plus, I, I believe these uh, speakers that I got are pre-tinned uh, at these spots near the little battery area yeah you can just barely see it by the black liquid tape thing on both sides of it yeah so that is what we are going to be desoldering here just by heating up those two spots with the solder uh, soldering iron and uh, then the speaker should come loose what I'm gonna do here is fold out the speaker just a little bit and also probably should get a better camera angle for this. There we go, everything seems neatly in focus now. Now I shall take my soldering iron and something that is not my hand, heat this area up till it gets all molten, and there we go. It'll separate nice and neatly. I'm gonna put the soldering iron back in its holster while I get the other one in position here is I don't want to mess with the wire because otherwise you'll have, have to solder this back in here. So I just kind of try to avoid 
any unnecessary internal damages, you know. Mm, should just go, loop. yep, see, no flux even necessary to heat that sucker up. As you can see on the wires, there's still a decent amount of uh, the solder onto it, so, yeah. Alright, now we're going to grab one of our speakers here. Oh, geez, that's very magnetic. Yeah, I got two of them here. And oh, I just noticed something. This one's a little bit more concave than this one. That might have been due to the shipping, because this is very magnetic. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I should use the one that looks worse to test it out and see how things go. But anyway, we're gonna flip that, <laughs> we're gonna flip that back over, and you can see that the solder points. Oh uh, man, kind of. It's this is all very, very small area. <laughs> Got a solder point here and a solder point there. As I said, they, they look like they're. Uh, pre tinned so I don't really have to worry about that, but I, what I do have to worry about is getting this soldered in place without too much ire. Because <laughs> I gotta worry about my hands being in the way and everything being in the way in general. Plus I'm filming. Uh, okay, here's how I think I'll do it. Is I bent the tips so that they're flatter and I'll just kind of lay them across into the solder as I make it all molten. So I'm going to bend that one off to the side. And... Uh, <laughs> this is still so, so tiny. Melt this in. There we go. That is one of two. Now i got to get the other wire in a nice situated fashion here. As a matter of fact, I should probably bend this one back over how it was in a way. Looking more closely at the second pad, it doesn't appear as if there is very much solder on that, so I think I will actually use a bit of the solder roll here and, oh geez, I'm hitting the camera with the solder roll. And I gotta try and, well, mm, mm, oh shoot, oh shoot. <laughs> I know I probably should be using flux too, but, uh, Or attached to the desk. <laughs> but now nah, I'm just, just kind of trying to be relatively simple using the least amount of uh, ingredients possible, I guess you could say. You don't necessarily need flux for it to stick, but it will help it bead up a little bit better. But yeah, I'm just showing you that it can be done without. If you do decide to use any of the flux here, just smear it on the pad before you uh, actually start putting solder on it and you'll be good. Alright, now let's try this again. Now that it looks like there's enough juices, get it all molten and... Uh, have to be sunk a little bit deeper. Actually, maybe not. Because of the... <laughs> I'll start melting the insulation at that point, probably. Alright, so that appears to be good. I'm gonna have to... because the... You know, the, the speakers, their backs are different. I'll have to situate the wires differently. But I think because the speaker is thinner, I'm going to lay the wires across it on the top like this so that it has a tighter fit when I put the case back on so it doesn't, like, rattle around. I mean, it's not really rattling that much now, but, you know, just, just for the sake of sakes. <laughs> oh, and also, you notice that I put the wires back where they were before on the other speaker. So, yeah, this... This wire was on this one, this wire was on this one. Yeah, it's it's all pretty intuitive, really. Just follow how it was before. All right, now we're going to move the power switch, because we don't really need that in place. Make sure that your buttons and stuff like that are all in place. Very, It's only like one way that they can go in and stuff like that. It's all pretty easy to do. But what I'm focusing on here is the ribbon cable. We're going to slot that in. Very carefully again. Very carefully, okay. Looks good. And I'm gonna carefully also put those black tabs back down. And the worst of it is over. <laughs> now I can reseat the speaker down into the little cavity that what the other speaker was into. It's gonna, yeah, as I said, I'm gonna leave the wiring so that it's all 
on top of the speaker for a tighter fit. I need to get off the buttons so I can actually fit this. <laughs> the pushing on the buttons pushes the whole thing up because the buttons are, you know, they are popped out of the Game Boy Color. So yeah, just gotta lift it up a little bit to get this to be sitting nicely. And then we get, we're gonna put the center screw in here. It's all a tight area, I know, I know. It's 90% hand in the camera. <laughs> And once you get the center screw in, you can then check to see if the buttons feel okay when you flip it around and see if they feel like that they pop back in and out. Like if they're if they're misaligned or something like that, they they will not they will not feel right at all. So yeah, I think everything is good here. So then I can now reverse the process of putting the screws and case and stuff like that back in. Yes, yes, I know the speaker is it's now hindering me a little bit. <laughs> I noticed just a second it's off. Oh, no, that speaker. Oh, actually, maybe I should take it back out because the speaker shifted when I was putting it back in place. Come on. Come on, I, I have faith that you can go in place. There we go. <laughs> okay, and if you want to make sure the speaker doesn't rattle, you could put like foam behind it or something like that. But I, I don't know. We're just going to see if it works for one thing. But yeah, you could just put something stuff behind the speaker to ensure it's nice and tidy and good to go. Anyway, I'm going to finish off screwing the screws back in. And we are done. I've still got the screws in the uh, back cover here, so I'm just gonna lay that down. You gotta focus on this bottom portion here, where everything lines up like so. Yeah, and then it should just sit flush. Oh, I should also show you something else. Another possible cause of a borked speaker is this incredibly, incredibly tiny piece of metal right through here in the headphone jack. See, it touches this piece right here. I'll, I'll see if I can show you how this works with just one hand. Um, when you plug in headphones, it will pop, oh geez, one hand that is not, is not friendly here. <laughs> when you pop in the headphone jack, and pop, well, pop headphones in the headphone jack, that piece of metal moves off to the side. See how it's in a wider position than it was before? Actually, I might be able to do this one-handed to uh, show you the mechanism of that, because I can pop it out. See how it closes? Well, what that does is it switches between the headphone jack and the speakers. If that little tiny thin piece of metal that flexes there gets tarnished, dirty, whatever, and doesn't make a connection with the slightly larger piece of uh, metal over here, that can also cause the speakers to be all crazy crazy. So you might want to try this before replacing the speaker, but I know for, for sure that I needed to replace the speaker, and I'll show you why. Uh, but yeah, so you might want to try cleaning this by scraping it with a blade or something like that before the speaker, but I'll, I'll get into how I'm sure that I needed to change the speaker in a minute here. For now, let's continue the buttoning up, and I also forgot to mention, if your uh, infrared shielding thingy falls out, just put it down, oh shoot, camera, cam oh man, it's always, always so, so much harder to do this in such a small area. <laughs> so, you want to put the infrared shield back in like ah, like that, basically, and slot it in that area in so like that. It doesn't go in flush because it attaches or goes into both sides of the case. And also the power switch. The power switch has a uh, little notch in it. See that? Uh, focus, man, focus. Yeah, but see this little notch in there? That notch goes towards the circuit board and downwards, because the notch actually fits into this little section of the case here. Focus. <laughs> see, there's a notch right in there. And what that does is it creates the clicking motion of this power switch. Like, without that 
without that switch, this is smooth. So yeah, I'm gonna put that in the off position and then slide the switch right on top of it. Oh man, I'm looking through the camera lens. This is nearly impossible. Okay, and now we got our click back. <laughs> oh, it's stuck to my finger. But yeah, you get the idea. And now I can button her back up. Watch the uh, um, springs in the battery compartment go through the hole here. Uh, if I can get this line here. <laughs> See, there's a spring over there. It's supposed to go through the battery compartment thusly. And this down here is something you also have to watch out for, the headphone jack and stuff like that. Once that all fits together, the rest of it should just pop right in place neatly. And then, of course, screw in the six screws that you screwed out. Batteries in, game in, and now we test. Not working. All right, I repeated all the steps, but this time I used the other speaker, which didn't look bent out of place. Let's listen. Yep, so it was the other speaker. So yeah, all the steps I showed were just fine, unless your speaker is broken from the start, so I'll have to contact Amazon about that. Listen to that clear sound. Well, as clear as a Game Boy Color can be. <laughs> Alright, now remember I said I was going to show you a properly working speaker of how I knew that the other one was broken? I've got another Game Boy Color here. This is the purple variety. That's the one I just fixed over there. And if we flip it around and look at the speaker, see how nice and clear it is? And everything looks all pristine. But look on the inside of the borked speaker. Uh-huh. I don't know why Game Boy Color speakers do that. But for some reason, around that metal filament, it gets like corrosion, and then it messes up the speaker. It doesn't seem to be a factor with all the speakers, because as you see, this one is working just fine still. But it may actually have to do with what kind of speakers Nintendo is using. See, these are both Game Boy Color speakers, but they are clearly different. This one's got a little bit of felty fuzz on the back. This one does not. Uh-huh. So it appears they're using different speakers, and the ones that are breaking are maybe this kind, or maybe it's just a fluke of when one breaks or something like that. You know, that gets that weird corrosion like that. I don't know, but I, I, it's just something that I noticed when I was uh, uh, checking over the speakers of the Game Boy Color, and I was like, oh yeah, those are different. But in any case, this concludes the tutorial, and I'll leave you to figure out the speaker problem, because I don't have that sort of expertise. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you later.